2012 junior section, Singapore Mathematic Olympiad problem. It's problem 18. And uh, I'm getting familiar with Koshi Schwartz. And when I first looked at this, I go, that does look like Koshi Schwartz, but it took me at least an hour to figure this thing out. And uh, these videos kind of betray the difficulty of what's really going on. I'll show you a nice clean answer here, but I thought and thought about how Koshi Schwartz could apply to this problem. Now, this statement right down here, uh, this is a, a summation statement of Cauchy Schwartz, and I write it this way, but notice you could just take the square root of this side and you would have something maybe that's more workable, but you would have to have the square root of all these sum ends on this side. Okay, so in other words, it's it, I, I like leaving it this way than taking the square root at the end of the problem. Some people like to go ahead and take the square root here and have this summation without the square and then square root over this entire object here. It, it's equivalent. So just wanted to point that out. Now, so uh, to, to make this problem, we're, we're supposed to maximize this expression right here, given this constraint up here about the squares uh, equaling one. And uh, so we're supposed to, again, maximize. We need to find an upper bound for this expression. Now, uh, so the approach I adopted here was I just wrote it out. Okay, I rewrote this uh, guy. I rewrote it. And then uh, I wrote it in the summation notation. And if you'll notice here, this is just equal to, for i equals one, you have one times x of one. Uh, and then for i equals to two, you have two times x of two. And I'm trying to get to where I can think in terms of summation without having to continue to write, write it out every time, you know what I mean? So, uh, and that's what, that's, the, that's helping me as much as anything. Anyway, so this summation notation is exactly the object that we're trying to uh, maximize, okay? And so what we did, I tried to split it a number of different ways. I just tried to use i here and then uh, x sub i. That didn't work out. That's uh, sometimes called the one trick. But notice that this kind of, this is kind of a clever way to do it that didn't occur to me for a long time. Uh, this piece right here, root i times root i is just i. And so this object is inside of here, this, uh, this guy is just equal to i x i. Right. And that's just something like that. And it took me a while to see it. I'm sure a lot of people saw it much faster than I saw it. But that's exactly the thing that we're trying to, um, to maximize. And so the rest of it is just a handoff to Cauchy Schwartz right here. You can see this piece right here is exactly this right here, exactly this right here, where your A sub I is uh, this root I, and then your B sub I is actually root I X sub I. Okay, now, so you just go on across here and you square these uh, square roots, okay, and so there, that's just equal to one, two, three, all the way up to 49, that's this piece right here. And then in a similar fashion, when you square this, you get I X squared, uh, I X sub I squared, that's what each of these are. Uh, I, there's an understood one right there, right? Uh, I X sub I squared, I X sub I squared, I x sub i squared. Now, but that's where the given information comes in. See, uh, the given information says all of this stuff is just equal to one. Or is this entire circle, circle object is just equal one. And it, that's because it's given. See, that is a given condition right up here. It's a given condition. So uh, on the very next line, all I did was square root uh, this, right? From going from here to here. I just took the square root, which just it left to the summation, which is what I wrote down right here. Okay, and again, we've seen earlier what this is equal to. It's equal to what we're interested in. We're trying to maximize this object right here, trying to maximize this. And so it's less than or equal to the square root of all of this stuff. But the miracle here is that all of this stuff adds up to one, or this would be a mess, right? Now, right here, uh, this is the, the well-known result, uh, the sum of the first uh, 49 integers, positive integers. And so it's, it's known to be 49 times 50 divided by two, it's just, just a, a result you see all over the place. But notice here, this is two times 25, okay? Now I, I just wrote the answer down, but just in case you didn't have a calculator, uh, this would end up being uh, just uh, seven squared, the square root of seven squared times five squared. 
Okay, in other words, notice that uh, 50 is equal to two times 25. So you're just gonna have uh, seven squared uh, times five squared, and this is still in the radical here, right? Sorry, folks, I hope that's legible. But again, so this is equal to seven times five, right? Just by properties of, you know, the squaring function and the square root function are inverse functions. So seven times five is a 35 you see, and that is it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thought it was cool. And, and again, it took me much longer than what this showed. It, it's just, the, the idea is to split it. This should be your a sub i, the a sub i, this, this guy right here. And this should be the b sub i. You actually split the radical apart and it works out very favorably. You get it exactly what you need. All right, thank you for watching.